It's really easy to become confused if you're thinking about what vaccines your cat needs and how often they actually need to be vaccinated. Well, today I'm talking exactly about this topic and hopefully I'll clear up those questions so you can make the best decisions about your cat's vaccination program. <coughs> And then my final question is from Ken, who writes that he'd be interested if I could talk more about vaccine schedule in cats, as he's been hearing concern that frequent vaccination is suspected to be linked to kidney disease. Um, and the reason for that is that the use of feline kidney cells actually in vaccine development can then trigger a cat's own immune system to then start damaging its own kidneys. So there's an autoimmune response. And Ken then writes, it seems to be not so clear just how frequently cats really do need to be vaccinated. Now, Vaccines really are the hot topic at the moment, both in people and in pets. And there's a lot of focus on social media and traditional media outlets as well about the potential side effects surrounding vaccination, some of which are true and some of which are completely false. Now, when it comes to vaccines causing kidney disease in cats, there is one study, to, certainly to my knowledge, that suggests vaccination may be linked to chronic kidney disease in cats. And this is significant because chronic kidney disease, it's a really common problem in older cats. And if our vaccinations are causing that or making that disease more likely, it's a risk factor for its development, then you know that's something that's significant and we should be looking into and knowing if that is actually the case at all. So in this study, their cats were followed and the difference between those that did and those that didn't develop chronic kidney disease were looked into. Now, many differences were examined. And in most cases, it was found that there was actually no difference between um, cats. So diet fell into this group. Um, and that's something to bear in mind that next time someone says, that dry food causes kidney disease. Well, in this, in this um, study, that wasn't found to be the case at all. Now, vaccination every one to two years, as well as moderate to severe dental disease, were found to increase the risk of developing kidney disease. But before you get carried away, there are a couple of caveats that we'll talk about. So those vaccinated less frequently, so cats that were vaccinated every three years or even less frequently than that, there didn't seem to be at any increased risk of developing kidney disease. And that is also a significant finding. So there was no indication in this paper as to which vaccines were administered to know if certain cat vaccines make kidney disease more likely to co compared to other cat vaccines that, that your cat might be given. Um, and really what vaccines there require is something that I'll come on to in a little bit. And also this is just one study which also has some major limitations, both in how the data was analysed and also the fact that there were only 27 cats who developed kidney failure, with nearly half of the cats originally enrolled in the trial actually dropping out of the study for reasons unknown. So we don't know, you know, why half of the cats that were originally enrolled fell out. It could be, you know, because they succumbed to other disease or just the owners stopped stopped answering questions and there was no follow-up or they moved, that kind of thing. But also only 27 cats kind of were in that, that, that group who developed kidney failure. So that's a pretty small sample size. Now, unfortunately, that's not uncommon with veterinary studies, with, our, with studies that look at all manner of different conditions in dogs and cats. They are often only involving very small numbers, which makes it very hard to draw firm conclusions when there's only one study that has been run. Now, that's not to say it's not right, but it's something to bear in mind. Like, all this isn't to discount the finding that there could well be a link between frequent vaccination and the development of kidney failure, but it's far from certain. And in fact, the majority of cats really should probably only be receiving a vaccine every three years, as I'll come on to. And these individuals were shown to be at no greater risk of developing kidney disease later on in life than cats not receiving any vaccination. So, you know, how relevant this is actually to the majority of cats, yeah, I'm not convinced. It may be something to think about, especially if your cat is having to have lots of vaccinations, but I think for the majority, it's not something we really need to be worried about. And, you know, we also can't lose sight of why we're vaccinating in the first place. We then need to think about, well, what vaccines does your cat actually need? And how often do you then really need to get your cat vaccinated? Which was the other part of Ken's question. And this is really going to depend on the lifestyle of your cat. So our core vaccines for every cat, so they want the ones that really every cat needs regardless of lifestyle, are cat flu. So that covers two different viruses. So herpes virus and Khaleesi virus are those. And it also covers uh, something called panleukopenia, which is also known as feline parvovirus. So they're given as kittens. They start generally from about six to eight weeks of age when your kitten's uh, a couple of months old. Uh, and then they have a three vaccination course finishing at or just after 16 weeks of age. 
Now, panleukopenia is then given again between six and 12 months kind of after that initial course, and it's then only going to be needed every three years. So it lasts for a long time, certainly lasts for at least three years. Now, it might be that it does last longer, but three years is that kind of minimum amount of time that we know it lasts for, and that's the recommended revaccination time for the majority of cats. Now, the cat flu vaccines, unfortunately, they are less effective than the panleukopenia. So you remember that the cat flu vaccines do make part of that core vaccine as well. And here, revaccination is really going to be based on risk. So every three years, again, is going to be the recommendation for cats at low risk of this disease. But for cats that are high risk, uh, that's going to be based on discussion with your veterinarian. It could be because they're living in a cat colony. It could be because they're going into a cattery very often, a boarding cattery or something like that. They're going to be at much higher risk. And if that's the case, they're going to need a vaccination every year. So, you know, that's really something to, to bear in mind there. And then rabies is going to be another core vaccine if either it's required by law or your cat goes outdoors and rabies is present in your country. Because really, you know, you've got to consider that rabies isn't to be messed with. It's an incredibly serious disease. It's serious for your cat, but as or more importantly, it's also serious in people. So the fatality rate is absolutely huge. And, you know, that's not something we want to play around with. Now, there are three yearly rabies vaccines. And so these also won't add to the potential for increasing the risk of kidney disease, as I kind of discussed at the start of the If question. we then move on to non-core vaccines. So these are vaccines that really, we could otherwise call them, you know, potentially lifestyle vaccines. And they include things like feline leukemia virus or FELV, FIV, so feline immunodeficiency virus, um, and also chlamydia will be included in these non-core vaccines. And they're going to be based on the presence of the disease in your area and also the lifestyle of your cat really to determine the risk of infection. And so the benefits of the vaccination compared to the very small risks associated with vaccines in general. So with every medical decision, be that vaccination, you know, be that anything else, any other surgical procedure, whatever it is, we're constantly doing a risk benefit analysis. So if the risks are high for developing these diseases, then, you know, vaccination is definitely going to be recommended. If the risks are very, very low, or clearly, if the diseases aren't present where you live, then we don't need to worry about vaccination. But that's something that really needs to, to be discussed with your vet, because they'll vary for, uh, you know, not just by area, but also by individual lifestyle of a cat, you know, whether they're an outdoor cat only, whether they go outside under supervision, or whether they're just free to come and go as they please would be kind of clear examples of, of kind of different lifestyle choices. And then the other thing to say about these non-core vaccines is that they are annual vaccines. So they could potentially have a small risk of increasing the likelihood of kidney failure later on in life. But, you know, like I said, with, with that part of the answer, we don't want to over-exaggerate the risk of that. And then if we're talking about vaccine side effects in general, the risk of that is somewhere around kind of 50 per 10,000 cats vaccinated with over half of those reactions really just being mild lethargy, you know, going off their food, having a slight fever, really simple signs that show that the vaccine has actually triggered an immune system, uh, the, the immune system to do something, kind of almost tricked it into being ill, if you like. And these signs, they typically only last for 24 to 48 hours. You know, they're really mild. The cat might be under the weather for a little bit, but you know, that's probably the same as you when you have your vaccine. I certainly know for me when I have my um, tetanus vaccine or my other vaccines, I do tend to feel pretty ropey for 24 to 48 hours. Don't need any specific treatment and then I'm right as rain. And it's you know, generally the same for your cat. So severe reactions really are very rare. That's not to say that they don't happen, but they are very rare. Now, the other thing to say is that all of these recommendations, they're based on the WSAVA, which is the World Small Animal Veterinary Association vaccination guidelines. Um, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And it goes into more details about how the immune system works and what, vaccination, what vaccines actually do to trigger that immunity. And then finally, as I've kind of suggested and hinted at already in this answer, it's really important not to lose sight of why we are actually vaccinating our cats. So vaccines, they're typically used to prevent diseases that either have a high potential of being fatal and resulting in death, or are likely to have a significant impact on a cat's quality of life. So if we're not seeing these diseases very often because vaccines are almost a victim of their own success, you know, that's the bottom line. These diseases, they're pretty nasty diseases that can have a massive impact on your cat's life, either by shortening it or meaning that they're living with a chronic, long-term, horrible disease that, you know, otherwise we can prevent.